Brought to you by wikivd.com Donovan McNabb Donovan Jamal McNabb is a former American football quarterback who played in the National Football League for 13 seasons, primarily with the Philadelphia Eagles. Before his NFL career, he played football and basketball for Syracuse University. The Eagles selected him, with the second overall pick in the 1999 NFL Draft and McNabb went on to play 11 seasons, with the team followed by a year with the Washington Redskins and Minnesota Vikings respectively. McNabb was the Eagles' starting quarterback from 1999 to 2009. During his tenure with the Eagles, he led the Eagles to five NFC East Division Championships, five NFC Championship Games, and Super Bowl XXXIX. He also became the Eagles' all-time leader in pass attempts, pass completions, passing yards, and passing touchdowns. His 3,469 career yards rushing ranks sixth all-time for NFL quarterbacks. Early Years Donovan McNabb was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. He attended Mount Carmel High School where, as a sophomore, he was a teammate of future NFL players Simeon Rice and Matt Cushing. Together, they helped Mount Carmel win the 1991 state championship over Wheaton Central High School, with McNabb scoring the final touchdown of the game. As a senior he led the team to a Chicago Prep Bowl championship. He also excelled in track during his high school years and played on the school basketball team with Antoine Walker. College career Though McNabb was approached by recruiters from numerous colleges only two schools, Syracuse University and the University of Nebraska offered him scholarships to play college football as a quarterback. He initially leaned toward attending Nebraska, as he relished the idea of being coached by Tom Osborne. Eventually, however, he decided to attend Syracuse and play for the Syracuse Orange football team principally because he wanted to prove he was a competent pocket passer but also for their broadcasting journalism program. After redshirting in 1994, his first year at Syracuse, McNabb went on to start every game during his college career compiling a 35-14 record. As a freshman, he completed the longest touchdown pass in Syracuse's history, a 96-yard throw against West Virginia University, in a game where he accounted for 354 total yards of offense. He was named the Big East Conference's Rookie of the Year at the end of the season. McNabb amassed 2,892 yards of total offense in his junior season to set a school record. As a senior he led Syracuse to a berth in the Orange Bowl against Florida as he completed 157 of 251 passes for 2,134 yards. He also pushed the eventual champions, the 1998 Tennessee Volunteers, to the limit in a very close game. His 22 touchdown passes tied the school's single-season record, set by former Eagle Don McPherson in 1987. McNabb also rushed 135 times for 438 yards and 8 touchdowns. He ranked 6th in the nation with a 158.9 passing efficiency rating, and 22nd in total offense with 233.8 yards per game. He tied the school record with 4 touchdown passes against Cincinnati and scored 5 touchdowns against Miami. McNabb was also teammates with future NFL star Marvin Harrison for one season at Syracuse. McNabb was named the Big East's Offensive Player of the Decade for the 1990s and Big East Offensive Player of the Year three times from 1996-98, as well as the first-team all-conference vote earner in each of his four seasons. He was a finalist for the 1998 Heisman Trophy.
Later he was named to the Syracuse All-Century football team. McNabb was also a walk-on for two seasons for the Syracuse basketball team under head coach Jim Boheim. He spent two years as a reserve on the school's nationally ranked basketball team, including the 1996 squad that lost to Kentucky in the national championship game. 1999, rookie season. McNabb was drafted in the first round with a second overall pick by the Eagles. Behind first pick Tim Couch in the 1999 NFL Draft. McNabb was the second of five quarterbacks selected in the first 12 picks of a quarterback-rich class that was at that point considered the best quarterback draft since the famous class of 1983. However, only McNabb and Daunta Culpepper would go on to have successful careers in the NFL. Tim Couch struggled with the Cleveland Browns and officially retired in 2007 after being cut by the Jacksonville Jaguars in a failed comeback bid while Akili Smith and Cade McNown were out of the NFL by 2002. By 2006 only McNabb was still with the team that originally drafted him. McNabb saw his first NFL regular season action in the second half against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In a 19-5 home loss on September 19, he made his first career start at home against Washington on November 14, completing 8 of 21 passes for 60 yards in a 35-28 win. He also had nine carries for 49 rushing yards and led the team to a pair of successful two-point conversions. He was the first Eagles rookie to start at quarterback since Brad Gerbel and the first Eagles rookie draft pick to start since John Reeves in 1972. With the win McNabb became the first Eagles rookie quarterback to win his first NFL start since Mike Barilla and the first Eagle quarterback. To win his first start since Ty Detmer, McNabb threw the first touchdown pass of his career versus Indianapolis, Indiana, a 44-17 home loss on November 21, 1999. McNabb went on to start six of the Eagles' final seven contests. 2000-2003 NFC East Championship Runs In his first full season as an NFL starter in 2000, McNabb finished second in the Associated Press MVP voting to Street. Lewis Rams running back Marshall Falk who set the NFL record for most touchdowns scored in a season. McNabb made his primetime debut on ESPN against Atlanta at home on October 1 with his first 300-yard passing game in a 38-10 victory, and the Eaglers' first 300-yard passer since Bobby Hoyer against the Cincinnati Bengals at home on November 30, 1997. McNabb's 55 pass attempts at Pittsburgh in a come-from-behind 26-23 overtime victory on November 12 were a career high and the fourth-highest total in team history. He was named the NFC Offensive Player of the Week after accounting for 90.7% of the offense in a 23-20 victory at Washington on November 26. His 125 rushing yards were the most by an NFL quarterback. Since the Chicago Bears' Bobby Douglas rushed for 127 on December 17, 1972, and was the sixth-best rushing effort by a quarterback since 1940, when the T formation was introduced, he threw for a career-high 390 passing yards and four touchdowns in a 35-24 victory at Cleveland on December 10 en route. 2 NFC Offensive Player of the Week honors. McNabb led the Eagles to their first playoff appearance since 1996, where they defeated the favored Tampa Bay Buccaneers 21-3 before losing to the New York Giants 2010. McNabb was selected as a first alternate 
to the NFC Pro Bowl squad in 2000, when Warner was unable to participate due to injury. McNabb took his spot and led the NFC on a touchdown scoring drive in his first series. He accounted for 74.6% of the team's total net yards in 2000. Only Carolina's Steve Bulin and San Francisco's Garcia had a higher percentage. His 629 rushing yards in 2000 were the highest among NFL quarterbacks and at the time, the fourth highest total ever. His six rushing touchdowns in 2000 were the most by an Eagles quarterback since Randall Cunningham, who also had six in 1988. McNabb broke the club's single-season record for most attempts and completions in 2000, marks previously set by Cunningham in 1988. He was named 2000 NFL Player of the Year by CBS Radio and the Terry Awards on Fox Sports and was named to the All-Madden team. McNabb led the Eagles in fourth-quarter comebacks in two wins versus the Giants in 2001. At the Meadowlands on October 22, his 18-yard pass to James Thrash, with 152 remaining, gave the Eagles a 10-9 victory. He wiped out a 21-14 deficit on December 30, engineering two fourth-quarter scores as the Eagles clinched the NFC East title with a 24-21 over arch-rival New York Giants. His eight career playoff touchdowns trails only Ron Dorowski. He was named NFL Offensive Player of the Week after the NFC Divisional Playoff game at Chicago on January 19, 2002, completing 26 of 40 for 262 yards and two touchdowns passing, and adding 37 yards and a touchdown on the ground, which was also the final touchdown. At the old Soldier Field, he became only the fourth quarterback in Eagles history to pass for 3,000 yards in consecutive seasons. Sonny Jurgensen, Ron Jaworski, and Randall Cunningham were the others. McNabb's Eagles advanced to the NFC Championship game for the first time since 1980, losing to the heavily favored St. Louis Rams. McNabb earned his second trip to the Pro Bowl following the 2001 season after combining for 3,715 yards of total offense and establishing career highs in touchdown passes and quarterback rating, including playoffs he threw touchdown passes in 15 of 18 games, and two or more in 12 of those games. He was named by his teammates as the club's offensive MVP in 2000 and 2001. During the offseason, McNabb signed a new contract with the Eagles worth $115 million over 12 years, with a $20.5 million signing bonus. In Week 11 of the 2002 season, McNabb suffered a broken ankle. On the third play of the game against the Arizona Cardinals, he was sacked by the Cardinals' Adrian Wilson and Lever Woods. He fumbled the ball, fell to the ground, and held his right leg. He went to the locker room to have his ankle taped but returned for the Eagles' second drive. His injury was reported to be a sprained ankle, but X-rays after the game revealed that McNabb had broken his fibula in three places. During the game, however, he was 20 of 25 passing with 255 yards and four touchdowns. McNabb was out for the last six weeks of the regular season. A dominant defense helped A.J. Feely and Coy Detmagoa combined 5-1 to finish the season. McNabb returned to face the Atlanta Falcons in the playoffs, but he recovered slowly. The Eagles defeated the Falcons 26 but were upset at home by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 27-10 in the NFC Championship game. Following the broken ankle, McNabb's willingness to run decreased, and his rushing statistics never matched the high standards set in his first four years. In late September 2003 McNabb was the subject of very controversial comments made 
by Rush Limbaugh who worked as a commentator for ESPN at the time, stating that McNabb was overrated and that, I think what we've had here is a little social concern in the NFL. The media has been very desirous that a black quarterback do well. The comments came after the Eagles began the season 0-2 losing to defending Super Bowl champion Buccaneers and eventual champion New England. Both losses coming in the newly opened stadium Lincoln Financial Field. There had been much discussion about the merit of these comments, which resulted in Limbaugh's resignation from ESPN. Football writer Alan Barrow argued that Limbaugh's comments were in line with McNabb's statistical performance at the time. Despite the slow beginning in the 2003 season, McNabb again led his team to the NFC Championship game. Although the slow start hindered his overall statistics for 2003, McNabb had the highest quarterback rating in the NFL for the second half of the season and also completed over 62% of his passes for over 8 yards per attempt, with Philadelphia's 14-3 home loss to the underdog Carolina Panthers in the 2003 NFC Championship game. McNabb became the first NFL quarterback since Danny White of the Dallas Cowboys to lead a team to three consecutive defeats in conference title games prompting some observers to conclude that McNabb chokes in big games. McNabb was knocked out of the NFC title game after being hit on the ground by Panthers linebacker Greg Favors after he had been tripped up on a broken play. McNabb's success during this period came despite the Eagles having arguably the two worst starting wide receivers in the NFL. In 2003, Philadelphia's wide receivers caught only five touchdown passes, tying the record for fewest in a 16-game season by going the entire months of September and October without having a wide receiver catch a touchdown pass. The 2003 Eagles became the first NFL team since 1945 not to have gotten a touchdown pass from any of its wide receivers in the first two months of a season. 2004, Super Bowl 39 McNabb finally amassed the kind of numbers that placed him firmly as one of the elite NFL quarterbacks statistically. He averaged 8.26 yards per attempt, completed 64.0% of his passes through 31 touchdown passes and only 8 interceptions. These numbers translated to a passer rating of 104.7. Furthermore, he became the first quarterback in league history to throw over 30 touchdowns and fewer than 10 interceptions in a single season. This dramatic improvement coincided with a massive upgrading of the Eagles' receiving core, namely the arrival of Terrell Owens, who caught 1,200 yards and 14 touchdowns in only 14 games. As a result, the Eagles won their first seven games of the season for the first time in franchise history, clinched first place in their division with five weeks still to play in the regular season, and won the NFC East by a record-tying seven-game margin in posting a 13-3 record, the franchise's best 16-game season ever, McNabb's finest moment of the season and of his career came that year in a Week 13 game with fellow Super Bowl contenders the Green Bay Packers. After starting the game completing his first 14 passes he led the Eagles to a 47-17 blowout victory. McNabb passed for an Eagles record 464 yards and 5 touchdowns, which all came in the first half. In 2010 it was ranked by Eagles fans as the game of the decade. In the playoffs, McNabb led the Eagles to their second Super Bowl trip ever with victories over the Minnesota Vikings 27-14 and Atlanta Falcons 27-10. Owens was not in the lineup during the two playoff victories and was recovering from a broken ankle. 
McNabb became only the third African-American quarterback to start in a Super Bowl after Doug Williams in the 1987 season and Steve McNair in 1999. McNabb led his team against the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 39. McNabb struggled, at times throwing three crucial interceptions. Two of these were thrown in New England territory, and one of those two was inside the 20-yard line. The final interception was, during a last gasp Hail Mary at the end of the game. He was also sacked four times. Controversy surrounded the end of the game. As center Hank Fraley claimed that McNabb was seriously ill, wide receiver Freddie Mitchell claimed that he had to call a few plays due to McNabb's illness. However, in an interview with NBC, McNabb said he was not sick and did not throw up. He just said he was tired. Some reports claim that McNabb had the wind knocked out of him by an earlier hit while others assert that he was unduly fatigued. An article written by a staff member of the Philadelphia Inquirer refuted allegations of McNabb throwing up during the Super Bowl and even labeled the alleged incident a myth. Both head coach Andy Reid and McNabb have denied any physical problems that led to the puzzlingly slow pace of play. Despite all of the problems, McNabb finished the game with 30 completions for 357 yards, the third-highest total for both categories in Super Bowl history, and three touchdowns, the only points in the game for Philadelphia. Despite McNabb's efforts, the Eagles lost by a score of 24-21. 2005-2006 McNabb's 2005 season began with turmoil and ended on the injured reserve list. While not speaking with his main target Terrell Owens and all the distractions that came with the Owens controversy, McNabb was named the NFC's Player of the Month for September. That month McNabb threw for 964 yards. Eight touchdowns and only two interceptions in three games leading the Eagles to a 2-1 record. McNabb carried that momentum into October as he went 33 for 48 through for 369 yards and three touchdowns en route to leading the Eagles to a memorable come-from-behind victory at an unfriendly Arrowhead Stadium against the Kansas City Chiefs. McNabb could not keep the momentum rolling however as the Eagles lost four straight games. Over that span McNabb posted a quarterback rating higher than 72 only once on November 6. At the Washington Redskins, after playing with a sports hernia and sore thumb, McNabb's season was finally over after a disastrous effort at home on November 14 on Monday night against the rival Dallas Cowboys. McNabb was intercepted by Roy Williams towards the end of the game and tried to tackle the defender. When Scott Shanley came in and tackled McNabb to the ground, McNabb had injured his groin on the play and was placed on the injured reserve list later that week. Mike McMahon replaced him at quarterback and went 2-5 as a starter with the Eagles finishing the season with a 6-10 record overall. Though low for his standards, McNabb put up respectable numbers in 2005. In nine games he threw for 2,507 yards, 16 touchdowns, and nine interceptions. To go along with that he completed 59.1% of his passes. Prior to his season-ending injury McNabb was on pace to throw for 4,457 yards which would have easily eclipsed his career high of 3,875 set in 2004. McNabb and the Eagles began the 2006 season at 4-1 before stumbling to 5-4 heading into a Week 11 game with Tennessee Titans on November 19. During the game McNabb tore the anterior cruciate ligament and meniscus in his right knee while jumping out of bounds ending his season. The third time in five years McNabb had gone down with six 
or more games remaining in the regular season. Eagles officials stated that his rehabilitation would likely last 8 to 12 months, which completely ended his 2006 season and even raised questions as to whether he would be ready to began playing by the beginning of the 2007 season. In the meantime, veteran backup quarterback Jeff Garcia took McNabb's place as the Eagles' starting quarterback. Garcia had success leading the Eagles from 5-5 after the Tennessee game to 10-6, and winners of the NFC East division. The Eagles went on to win their home playoff game in the wild card round of the playoffs against the New York Giants. 23-20 with Garcia under center. However in the following divisional round they were beaten by the New Orleans Saints in the Superdome 27-24. Having played nearly up to full speed in the preseason games it was decided that McNabb would return to the field several months short of the full year-long recovery expected of an ACL injury. In the season opener at Green Bay the Eagles and McNabb suffered a 16-13 loss. McNabb had his share of problems completing less than half of his passes for 184 yards and one touchdown. The Eagles lost their first home game of the season to the rival Washington Redskins 2012 though his numbers improved. As Week 3 approached, skeptics had already wondered whether McNabb still had his skill that propelled him to success in the past. The Eagles defeated the Detroit Lions in a 56-21 win in Week 3. McNabb completed 21 out of his 26 attempted passes for 381 yards. Four of those passes went for touchdowns. His brilliant performance against the Lions was highlighted by his first perfect quarterback rating game. However, Week 4 did not prove to be as good as the Eagles thought it would be. The Eagles endured yet another loss this time to the New York Giants. The Giants' defense led by defensive end OSI Amenyura sacked McNabb a record tying 12 times. McNabb completed 15 out of 31 attempted passes for 138 yards and no touchdowns during a win against the Cowboys. Sideline reporter Pam Oliver reported during the game that McNabb indicated that he did not expect to be back in Philadelphia for the 2008 season. McNabb later indicated that this was not true, and stated that although he believed rookie Kevin Kolb's time would come, he would be an eagle the next season. 2008 At the conclusion of the 2007 season McNabb faced criticism for asking for playmakers. On his Yard Barker blog, he did however deny he was taking a shot at anyone in particular saying, We were 8-8. Eight, eight. There is room for improvement. McNabb caused another mild stirring camp when he suggested that the Eagles should not have lost a game to any of their NFC East opponents the previous season. He felt that they were just a few plays away from being a playoff team. He even went on to say, I still put us at the top of the NFC. In week one of the 2008 NFL season, McNabb threw for 361 yards and three touchdowns which included a 90-yard toss to Hank Basket. At the end of the second quarter, this performance led to him receiving the FedEx Air Player of the Week award. In Week 3 against the Steelers, McNabb threw his 176th career touchdown passing Ron Jaworski and becoming the Eagles' all-time touchdown pass leader. McNabb set a career high with 58 passing attempts and tied a career high with three interceptions in the NFL's first tie game in six years. When the Eagles played the Cincinnati Bengals and ended up with a 13-13 tie, McNabb later admitted that he was not aware that an NFL game could end in a tie leading to controversy because this could have affected game strategy. After the tie, McNabb struggled in a game against the Baltimore Ravens going 8 of 18 for 54 yards. 
with two interceptions of fumble and being sacked twice. In the second half Andy Reid decided to go with Kevin Kolb who was in his second year in the league. This was McNabb's first time being benched for something other than injury or a meaningless game. In the game Kolb threw an interception that was returned 108 yards for a touchdown by safety Ed Red breaking the record he previously held for longest interception returned for a touchdown. Despite his up-and-down season McNabb helped the Eagles reach the playoffs. For the seventh time in his nine seasons as a starter, he also set a career high, with 3,916 yards passing and led the Eagles to a franchise record 416 points. In the wild card round McNabb threw for 300 yards including a 71-yard touchdown to Brian Westbrook to lead Philadelphia to a 26-14 win over the Minnesota Vikings. On January 11, 2009, McNabb led the Eagles past the Giants in the divisional round of the playoffs. The Eagles won 23-11 and advanced to the NFC Championship game against the Arizona Cardinals, whom they had beaten earlier in the season. In the game McNabb was penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct when after being tackled into the Giants' sideline after a lengthy run. He picked up the Giants' coaching phone in jest. 2009 in the 2009 NFL Draft the Eagles picked Missouri Tigers star-wide receiver Jeremy Macklin to add to McNabb's receiving call with Kevin Curtis and Deshaun Jackson, while Curtis only caught 77 yards. Macklin had 773 and four touchdowns in a respectable rookie season, while Deshaun Jackson had his first 1,000-yard season. Another reliable target for McNabb was the new starting tight end Brent Selec, who he connected with 76 times for 971 yards and eight touchdowns. In the season opener, McNabb led the Eagles to a 38-10 win over the Carolina Panthers. McNabb completed 10 of his 18 passes for a total of 79 yards and two touchdowns. However, Andy Reid said the following Monday that McNabb broke a rib while rushing for a touchdown in the third quarter. The Eagles were hopeful McNabb would start in the Week 2 game against the New Orleans Saints. However, he was kept on the sidelines in both Week 2 and Week 3. Kevin Cole replaced him, and the Eagles lost to the Saints but beat the Chiefs the next week. Following the Eagles' bye week in Week 4, McNabb returned in the Week 5 game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers completing 16 of his 21 attempts for 264 yards and three touchdowns and being responsible for 210 of the 219 yards that the Eagles' offense managed in total in the first half. McNabb reached 200 career touchdowns and 30,000 career yards passed in a win against the Washington Redskins on October 26, 2009, with a 45-yard touchdown pass to Deshaun Jackson. However, the wild card rematch with Dallas would prove to be just as disastrous if not worse. McNabb struggled early on, and was unable to get the offense into a rhythm until it was too late. His lone score came in the second half off a meaningless touchdown to Deshaun Jackson. Philadelphia would fall 34-14 to Dallas, marking the first time McNabb had ever lost a first-round playoff game. Despite there being many factors in Philadelphia's loss such as the horrible play of the defense, lack of sufficient protection along the offensive line and costly turnovers by Michael Vick, and Leonard Weaver McNabb was heavily criticized for the loss for failure to rally the team early and holding on to the ball for too long, despite having had arguably one of his best seasons statistically in 2009 McNabb began to face criticism and speculation about his future with the Eagles.
Many also criticized the scene of him emerging from the Cowboys' stadium tunnel dancing and playing air guitar and concluded that he was not a serious leader and contender and called for his replacement by the seemingly more serious Kevin Kolb. Despite his crucial losses and heavy criticism, McNabb was given Pro Bowl honors for the last time in his career. McNabb was three tenths for 78 yards and one touchdown to Deshaun Jackson, while also leading the NFC team in rushing with four carries for 26 yards. Washington Redskins in the press conference following the Eaglers' loss to Dallas and even up to April 1, Andy Reid stated that McNabb would remain the starting quarterback in Philadelphia for the 2010 season. However, on April 4, the Eagles traded McNabb to the Washington Redskins in return for a second-round pick in the 2010 NFL Draft and a conditional third- or fourth-round pick in the 2011 NFL Draft. The conditional pick became a fourth-round pick in 2011 which was traded to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in exchange for a lower fourth-round pick in 2011 and a fourth-round pick in 2012. The fourth-round pick in 2012 was then traded along with a 2012 third-round pick to the Houston Texans for a lower 2012 third-round pick and linebacker Demeco Ryans. In the first week of the 2010 season McNabb and head coach Mike Shanahan led the Redskins to victory over the Dallas Cowboys. In week two, McNabb nearly engineered a victory over the Houston Texans passing for 426 yards, but came up just short of a victory when the Texans prevailed 30-27 in overtime. In Week 4, on October 3, McNabb played against the Eagles for the first time returning with the Redskins to Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. Although McNabb posted only pedestrian statistics, the Redskins won 17-12. During pre-game introductions McNabb received a standing ovation from Eagles fans then hugged former coach Andy Reid at their post-game handshake. In Week 5, McNabb struggled for the first three quarters but rallied the Redskins to a 16-13 overtime victory against the eventual Super Bowl champion Green Bay Packers. At FedEx Field, he was 26-49 for 357 yards with one touchdown and one interception. In Week 6, McNabb was 29-45 for 246 yards. He threw one touchdown and was intercepted twice, with the second interception coming on fourth down in the last minute of the fourth quarter against the visiting Indianapolis Colts. The Redskins fell to the Colts 27-24. McNabb's passer rating was 67.5. In Week 8, Shanahan stated in a press conference that McNabb would remain the Redskins' starting quarterback. On November 15, 2010 McNabb signed a five-year extension worth $78 million with a chance to make it $88 million by completing incentives. The deal stated that if McNabb was not cut or traded at the conclusion of the 2010 season he would receive a $10 million bonus. The same day his Redskins suffered a 59-28 defeat by his former team the Eagles. At home on Monday Night Football, McNabb finished the game going 17 of 31 for 295 yards, with two touchdowns and three interceptions. On December 17, 2010, head coach Mike Shanahan relegated McNabb to the third quarterback position for the rest of this season stating that he wanted to evaluate backup Rex Grossman in game play. McNabb had perhaps one of his worst years of his career since 1999 going down in touchdowns and up in interceptions. However, at the time McNabb was demoted to third string, he was on pace to total 4,156 passing yards for the season, which would have broken the Redskins' all-time franchise record.
and been the first time he had exceeded the 4,000-yard mark in his career. Minnesota Vikings On July 27, 2011 the Washington Redskins and the Minnesota Vikings came to an agreement on terms for a trade. After restructuring his contract Washington traded McNabb to Minnesota in exchange for a sixth-round draft pick in 2012 and a conditional sixth-round draft pick in 2013. McNabb had been rumored as a possible addition to the Vikings for the past three years in part due to his relationship with then-coach Brad Childress, the former Eagles offensive coordinator. Vikings punter Chris Kluwer agreed to give McNabb his number five jersey in exchange for a $5,000 donation to kick for a cure McNabb to promote Kluwer's band Tripping Icarus during a press conference and an ice cream cone. After starting the 2011 season with a 1-5 record, on October 18 it was announced that McNabb would no longer be the starting quarterback for the Vikings as the job was given to rookie Christian Ponder for the remainder of the season. McNabb requested and was granted his release from the team on December 1, 2011 with a reported interest in joining the Houston Texans, Kansas City Chiefs, or his hometown Chicago Bears, all three of whom had lost their starting quarterbacks for the season two injury but were still making playoff pushes. While the Texans and Chiefs had signed Jake Dulham and Kyle Orton respectively prior to McNabb becoming a free agent, the Bears had not signed anyone and expressed interest in adding McNabb. It was ultimately decided that it was too late to add a free agent quarterback for the playoff hunt as it would be tough to grasp their offense in the short period of time. The Bears subsequently signed Josh McCone. On July 29, 2013 McNabb officially retired from professional football as a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. NFL career statistics. McNabb has totaled 3,341 yards on 587 carries and 28 touchdowns rushing in his career along with 362 yards on 63 attempts and three touchdowns in the playoffs. McNabb held the record for most consecutive pass attempts completed with 24 over two games in 2004 against the New York Giants and Green Bay Packers. Until Ryan Tanhill broke this record on October 25, 2015 with 25 consecutive passes completed. Over two games, Mark Brunel and David Carr hold the record for most consecutive completed passes in a single game with 22. McNabb also completed 25 consecutive passes against the San Diego Chargers on October 23, 2005. But this record is not counted by the NFL as it included a spiking of the ball to stop the clock at the end of the half. The 2005 game was also noteworthy for Coach Reed calling for McNabb to have 25 pass attempts in a row without interruption by a running play. As of the 2010-11 NFL season, McNabb ranked fourth best all-time in career interception percentage among NFL quarterbacks. Among quarterbacks with at least 1,500 pass attempts only Aaron Rodgers, Neil O'Donnell, and Tom Brady have a lower career interception percentage than McNabb. Broadcasting career In September 2012 McNabb joined the NFL Network as an analyst. In 2013, McNabb became an analyst on Fox Sports Live Fox Sports 1's flagship program and in August 2014, it was announced that McNabb would provide color commentary alongside Dick Stockton for a few games during the 2014 NFL season for Fox. He resigned from Fox in late 2015. In August 2016 McNabb became the lead analyst for Bain Sports College football coverage. And he also he joined ESPN Radio as an analyst. Personal Life 
McNabb married his college sweetheart Raquel and Sarah Roxy Nurse in June 2003. They have four children, daughter Alexis who was born in 2004 twins Zariah and Donovan Jr., who were born in 2008 and Devin James who was born in 2009. The family splits its time between homes in Moorestown, New Jersey and Chandler, Arizona. In 2002, McNabb, who holds a Bachelor of Science degree in speech communication from Syracuse University, was named to the institution's Board of Trustees. He is one of the youngest trustees to have served there. McNabb currently is an athlete partner and serves on the advisory board for Mode Sports Nutrition. McNabb also played basketball at Syracuse University as a reserve guard in the 1996 NCAA Men's Division I Basketball Tournament National Championship game against the University of Kentucky Wildcats. McNabb played against his former high school teammate Antoine Walker. McNabb's nephew, Darnell Nurse, was the first-round seventh overall pick by the Edmonton Oilers in the 2013 National Hockey League entry draft. McNabb's niece, Kia Nurse, is a college basketball player for the Connecticut Huskies and the Canada women's national basketball team. In April 2014, McNabb served a one-day jail sentence in Maricopa County, Arizona for a 2013 conviction for driving under the influence. On June 28, 2015 McNabb was arrested for DUI following a traffic accident in Gilbert, Arizona. He pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 90 days 18 to be served in jail and the remainder under house arrest. He was also assessed a $6,000 fine and required to do 30 hours of community service. He paid his fine and began serving his time on November 30, 2015. On December 18, McNabb was released from jail after having served an 18-day sentence and then completed a 72-day house arrest sentence. Brought to you by wikivd.com Would you like to know more?